In this video, I'm going to do a deep dive into dependency injection in Golang. A lot of people are commenting on my videos and they basically cry for help. They say, Anthony, I wish Golang had a proper way of injecting dependencies. Anthony, I wish Golang had a, had a dependency injection container. I don't even know what a dependency injection container is. I disagree. I think Golang has one of the best mechanics for dependency injection out there. Before we do our deep dive, if you're not subscribed yet to the channel and you like the content I'm providing to you, please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up. Leave some questions in the comments. Jump into my Discord community, right? And for the people that really want to level up, I made the full-time GoDev program specifically for people that are willing to become professionally active as a Golang engineer in the industry. We basically cover everything from the basic mechanics of Golang, mastering concurrency, building JSON APIs, microservices. You even have a, my treat to you a free blockchain uh, from scratch, um, more of a distributed uh, lesson. And of course, we're going to cover how to land a job. Fulltimegorev.com, looking forward to see you as one of my students. Okay. Before, guys, before we uh, can actually take a look at dependency injection, we first need to know what is a dependency, right? What is a dependency? How can we spot dependency in our application? So we're going to do that real quick. So we're going to say type uh, a rock climber because we're going to make... Uh, some kind of a rock climbing game or, or, or application, right? So it's going to be a structure. We're going to say a rocks climbed. Um, climbed is going to be an integer. And we're going to make a function here. And we're going to say RC from a rock climber. It's going to be a pointer because we are going to adjust the rocks climbed. So that's why it's a pointer. And we are going to say uh, climb rock, right? Uh, and what the only thing we're going to do is we're going to say RC rocks climbed plus plus. Easy peasy. But we know that if we are climbing rocks, we're going high up into the sky. So what we need to do is that maybe after a couple of meters, we need to basically uh, play some safety guards. We need to prevent that we are going to smack our cheeks down onto the, onto the ground after falling down 100 meters, because then dependency injection doesn't really matter anymore. So in this case, we're going to make something very simple. We're going to say if RC rocks climbed, if RC uh, rocks climbed is going to be 10. Uh, we could actually make it a module uh, so you can basically this function gonna work forever. But in this case, we're going to be bad programmers and we're gonna say rocks climbed is 10. And each time, uh, if we have 10 rocks climbed, then we're gonna say RC place safeties, uh, safeties, something like this, right? So after 10 rocks, we're going to grab our uh, tooling and we are going to hammer down a safety into the wall, right? So we're going to make this function here. We're going to say again, RC pointer to the rock climber. We're going to say place uh, safeties. And that's going to be an FMT parental N. And we're going to say here, placing my safeties. Something like that, right? <coughs> Nothing really wrong with this thing. Uh, so we're going to say RC is going to be this uh, rock climber. Yes, just like that. And then we're going to loop here real quick. Let's say we're going to loop 11 times. And then we're going to say RC uh, climb rock here, boom, but go run dot and we're placing safeties all fine. So um, nothing wrong with this, but we can see that there are going to be some problems further on because we're climbing rocks and um, maybe we are climbing different kinds of rocks, right? Maybe we are climbing, for example, ice rocks, sandy rocks. Uh, maybe we are even climbing concrete or something. I don't know, right? So you can already see that there is going to be an effect on our place safeties function right here, right? This is not going to be a pure function anymore. It's going to be a function that's going to be heavenly depending on the type of rock we are going to climb. So that's no big of a problem. We can modify that. You could say int here, kind, int, right? And you could say uh, switch rc.kind, right? And we could say case uh, one, uh, which maybe is ice, right? We could say case two, which could be sand, uh, and case three, which could be, for example, concrete, right? No big of a deal, that's fine, right? Switch statement, why not? But placing safeties can be very, very heavenly a heavy, a heavy function. And what do I mean by a heavy function is that maybe placing safeties is going to go to our database. 
maybe placing safeties is going to go to a third party API. Uh, maybe it's only for ice rocks we're going to uh, go to the database because we're going to check what kind of temperature temperature uh, ice is going to have or something. And then based on that, we need to do a third party API or something. Or actually we're gonna first go to the third party API to check the temperature with a sensor. And then we are going to go to the database to pick the right tools for that type of ice, right? So you can see that placing safeties can have big effects on a rock climber, which basically means that placing safeties is a hard dependency. So what people will do is say, okay, no problem. We're going to extract placing safeties out of the domain of our rock climber, right? This entity, the domain of rock climber, we're going to extract placing safeties out and we are going to make something like a type, um, a safety placer, safety placer, actually, to be honest, safety, safety placer is going to be a structure, right? Uh, this can have a kind, no problem, int, and then we actually going to basically completely uh, copy this function paste it in here, and we're gonna say SP from safety placer, which is going to be safety placer, right? And uh, we're going to say SP kind, and we're gonna do the same thing, right? So uh, what we need to do basically is saying, we extracted the, the place safety from the rock climber. So what's gonna happen is now, we're going to say that the SP, which is the safety placer, right? The rock climber is going to depend on the safety placer. That is, that's something we can agree upon. So what's gonna happen is that instead of saying RC, after we climb 10 rocks, we're going to say rc.sp.place safeties. This is already a better design because right now the rock climber, the function, the logic of the rock climber is now at the domain of the, the, the rock climber domain doesn't, has the logic of placing safeties because it's in the safety placer. But actually you're just, uh, moving the problem somewhere else. You're not solve the problem. You're moving the problem. Your rock climber is going to depend still uh, on the safety placer. Although your logic is not in the rock climber anymore, but it's in the safety placer. That's bad design because you have a hard coded dependency here, right? It's basically the false assumption of being a good programmer because you think, oh yeah, I split it out. Now we have a rock climber, we have a safety placer. I just put the safety placer into the rock climber, you pee the poopy. But that's not true. You're, you're basically just um, depending on the same thing, but different, right? So how can we solve that, right? Well, if you wanna do dependency injection in Golang, which is a very simple concept that's getting overly complicated, right? Is we're gonna make the safety placer here we're gonna make that, we're gonna put that on top and we're gonna actually say that the safety placer is not a struct, but an interface, right? And the only thing a safety placer is going to do, it's going to do place safeties, uh, safeties like this, right? That's the only thing our safety placer is going to do. That's the only thing we care about, right? So instead of uh, this thing, we're gonna quickly comment that real, uh, out real quick like that. And, <coughs> Wait, do we have this is going to be capitalized? I'm going to make this small caps, by the way. Uh, so it's going to work, right? So now we're going to see that this rocks climber here still has a dependency, right? The rocks climber still has a dependency. It's still depending on the safety placer, but it does not depend on the implementation of the safety placer. It implements on a behavior of the, of the safety placer. And that's completely different. The implementation is, in my opinion, if it depends, if your program depends on an implementation, you have a hard-coded dependency. If your program depends on a behavior, you are basically uh, a god because a behavior can be anything. So you can jiggle around with it, right? Because can you imagine we are basically depending on the implementation of a safety placer, hard-coded, like our previous example, and we need to test even though we don't want to test a rocks climber on placing the safeties, we still need to uh, inject, we still need to construct our rocks climber with the safety placer be, uh, implementation, which could have a database. So we need to have our MongoDB set up. It's going to do some API calls. So we need to have an API key and, and, and some URLs and all that stuff. So it's nasty, even though we don't want to test it, right? But now we are depending on a behavior 
we are free to go, right? And I'm going to show you, right? So basically, uh, of course, it's not going to work right now because we don't have an implementation. So we're going to make that, right? So we're going to say type. Uh, we're going to say ice safety. Uh, safety placer, something like that, which is going to be a structure, right? And this I safety placer can hold a DB. It can, which is also a dependency, right? Um, that we need to inject. It can hold some other stuff, right? API keys for 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 some shenanigans. Uh, and then we're gonna say here. Uh, wait, how can I? What's going on? Like that, it's perfectly fine. We're gonna say safety placer, which is going to be the I safety placer. Uh, we're gonna delete this whole shebang here, and we're gonna say placing my ice safeties, right? Perfectly fine. So um, let's make a constructor here, func new rock climber, which will take an SP, we're gonna inject, we're gonna inject, this is dependency injection, we're gonna inject our safety placer, right? Which is the behavior, not the implement, well, we're gonna inject some kind of implementation, but it depends here on a behavior. I hope that makes sense. It's very important aspect to understand. It's gonna be a rock climber pointer, and we are going to return here um, the rock climber, of course, and we're going to say that the SP is going to be the uh, safety placer interface, right? So uh, we're going to say here RC new uh, rock climber, right? And we're going to say the I safety placer in our case, right? If we run this, did I save this? Yes, if we run this, now we're going to place my I safeties. Perfectly fine. But maybe with all the sebang, it's doing API calls, it's doing uh, database uh, queries and all that stuff. Heavy dependency. But now I want to have a, a, a not so heavy dependency because I'm testing my code on something else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, for example, um, this is that, I'm going to do this, func, um, no, type, nop, no, nop stands for no operation uh, safety placers. For example, it's going to be a structure, just like that. And then we're going to copy the safe play safety function here, just like this. Call this the knob. Perfectly fine. And uh, we don't do anything here. We just maybe print out. We're not going to do the database. It's just nothing. It's just, it's a placeholder. It's a mock. It's a mock. That's maybe a better thing. Placing no safeties at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, instead of doing this I safety placer, we can actually say the knob safety placer, right? No big of a deal. We just switched or we just injected a new dependency with the blink of an eye without modifying anything in the rocks climber, right? We didn't touch them at all. We only changed the implementation of the safety placer behavior, right? So. Let's go run this real quick just to show you to get some dopamine going, right? Placing no safeties because we're testing, no DB call, no API call, no nothing, good to go. This is basically dependency injection, right? There's nothing more to it, right? Because dependency injection, injection is just basically um, instantiating some kind of implementation into another object, into another entity, which is going to depend on that uh, object. Right? It cannot live without that object. That's the dependency. You know what I mean? So how can we, like I said before, how can we make that even better is by de not depending on an implementation, but depending on a behavior, which basically is being done with interfaces in Golang. We are depending on an interface, which is the play safety's behavior, which can be any implementation we do not care about. Right? That's dependency injection in Golang. It's easy, it's simple, it's powerful. There is no need to make it more complex than that, right? If you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel. Give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments. And again, if you wanna be professionally active as a Golang engineer, these kinds of concepts, this kinds of stuff, it's what I'm doing in the full-time goref.com program all the time, right? If you wanna be a very specialized Golang engineer, check out fulltimegodev.com. And I'm looking forward to see you in one of my videos or live streams. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.